Howdy campers and welcome back to the salt mine. We're going to be pulling a seine net today. Seine nets are used for scientists to be able to collect a lot of fish in one area. We have this large net that Phil and I are holding right now and in the middle you have the bag. We call it a bag seine because while we're um, pulling this through the water, all the fish will go into this bag. We have the float line that will keep the net up. We have the lead line which has weights on it to keep the bottom on the seafloor. And we have braille poles that will keep close to the ground as we go. Now, like I said in the last video, we always want to do the stingray shuffle. We don't want to pick up our knees because we don't want to step on anything that could be there. So once we pull up the net, we're going to have all these fish in a bag and hopefully we'll get to show you some really awesome stuff. One thing, one plant we also find in the salt marsh is seagrass. It's called Halidule ridei. It's a type of seagrass that lives on the bottom. It also creates a habitat I feel for things. Crabs. Nice. For things like pipefish to hide in and all kinds of crabs and other things as well. There's a fish. There's a fish. Lots of fish. All right. There's also baby crabs. So, we got a couple ladyfish. So these are ladyfish, and they have those leptocephalus larval form. Okay, they're related to uh, tarpon and bonefish. Their larval form almost looks like they're clear as babies. They're just like these little noodles that are clear. They just shred. This is a pinfish, often confused with piggy perch. You see these dorsal spines here. I like to call it the Dorito chip method. They put out these spines and predators don't want to eat them because it'll stab the roof of their mouth. But they have this beautiful color and whenever they're upset, they actually get a little bit darker. We see pinfish all over the salt marsh. This is a croaker. A lot of people do catch croakers on Galveston Island. They make a croaking type noise with their swim bladder. Kind of sounds like a frog. They go croak, croak, croak. So yes, this is the spot croaker and it's in the drum and croaker family. And so they drum and croak and they make a lot of noise. Pretty cute stuff. We also find a lot of shrimp. Now shrimp will start their life cycle in the salt marsh. You saw it whip backwards. They have a telson <laughs> that allows them to whip their tail back and forth. They whip their tail back and forth. So this hard part of their tail called the telson will snap back and it'll allow them to go backwards. So it's pretty awesome that they can go backwards instead of forwards and confuse their prey. Now, like I said, all shrimp will start their life cycle in the salt marsh <laughs> and then they'll eventually go on your table so you can eat them. This is a silver side. You can see this beautiful silver stripe right down the side. This is a bait fish that uh, spoonbills, roseate spoonbills, love to eat. They love to snack on these silver sides. Can I pull the silver side back? Yeah, come here. This is uh, the striped mullet. Okay, the striped mullet. Diversity wise, we did a pretty good catch here. So the estuaries here in the United States are some of the most diversified habitat that we have on, you know, in North America. So lots of species, very species rich. Is this also a Yep, that's another mullet. mullet. Hmm. I saw a crab in here. Oh, there's one. I Can oh. you get him? <laughs> oh no! Where'd he go? Be free! No! More shrimp. 
Annie, will you release this shrimp? No. No! Hey. Let me look for a crab real fast. I did see one. They usually like to try to hide. They do. Right their there. Aha! <laughs> oh, did you get it? I put my hand right on there. it. Right there. Oh, okay. There's two of them. Got it. <laughs> this little beautiful crab right here is a juvenile blue crab. Most people know the blue crab is by their blue color. And this little guy, um, they start their life cycle in the salt marsh and they want to have that beautiful camouflage. You can see at the back they have paddles on the back of their, uh, their swimming legs. Not all crabs can actually swim in the water column. A lot of them will crab walk like you normally see a crab walk back and forth side to side. But these guys can swim through the water column. This is the sheep's head minnow. Okay. So Cyprinodon variegatus. And uh, it's one of the hardiest fish we have here in the marshes here in Galveston Bay. So it ha has a wide range of tolerances to salinities and water temperatures. So it uh, will be in waters out here very near freezing and then waters that are very hot during the summertime and uh, very high salinities and very low salinities. Okay. Here's another blue crab. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a real good pool. So, like I described in the last video, um, whenever the mud doesn't get churned up a little bit, it gets anoxic. It's like chocolate milk. When you leave all that powder at the bottom for a while, you get these black streaks in the mud, and that's anoxic mud. It smells kind of like rotten eggs. That one's pretty light, but it does usually smell like rotten eggs. And they actually use this uh, anoxic mud in spa treatments and stuff like that. So usually, when we're out here, we give ourselves a little bit of war paint. So we can have an instant spa and also that the fish know that we mean business. It's insane. Get it? Sides, pinfish, mullet. <laughs> uh, looks like there's a little tina four there. You see it? Oh, yeah! Mm -hmm. Couple. Or did we break one? So, of course, we got a very large mullet, which is beautiful, but we also have these tina fours. A lot of locals in Galveston call them goobers, which I think is really funny. But tina fours are non stinging jellies. They actually have bioluminescence as well. Whenever you agitate them in the evenings, a lot of times you can see them light up. So, also called comb jellies, and uh, tina four means comb bearers. So, the combs are rows of uh, teens. Little uh, kind of like microvilli that allow it to swim. Okay, so that teens it, uh, it swims. Okay, you want to show them the sea snot? Oh, there's a louse in there too. Is there? Yeah. Wow. Well, Yeah, so there's a parasite on this little guy's tongue. It's gonna be really, really hard for you guys to see in the video, but there is a type, there's a louse that will actually eat the tongue of the fish, hook onto the blood source of the fish, and will replace, kind of replace the, the tongue. It's a parasitic relationship. Bay anchovies have these uh, really large jaws because they will skim feed, so it allows them to get a lot of food in their jaw. I'm gonna release this guy.
So here's the uh, the Mick Jagger of the marsh. <laughs> you can't always get what you want. Woop woop. <laughs> Those mullet are the ones you see in Galveston that will jump out of the water randomly. People don't know really why they jump out. It might be to avoid predators. It also might be just because they enjoy it. But some will also say that because they have such wide scales, can it helps them get some of the parasites off of them? So who knows? I think they just enjoy it. If I were a mullet, I would just jump out of the water. Okay, so we're going to uh, test the salinity of uh, Galveston Bay here. Galveston Bay is a positive estuary. So a positive estuary means that its salinity is less than oceanic salinity. And, uh, and what that means is positive means that the inflow of fresh water is greater than its evaporation rate, and so on and so forth, okay? So this is called a refractometer, and the way it works is the uh, sunlight enters this prism and refracts onto a scale here in the eyepiece, and uh, and that's how we tell what the salinity is. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna use uh, parts per thousand, so salinity PPT. to take another sample. Much better, the salinity is about 16 to 17 parts per thousand. Oceanic salinities are in the ranges of like uh, 33 to 36 parts per thousand. So the low rating, the low salinity here, 16, 17 parts per thousand, is due to our freshwater inflow. Uh, freshwater inflow in Galveston Bay basically comes from uh, three river or bayou systems, uh, the Trinity River, um, uh, Buffalo Bayou coming out of Houston, and uh, the San Jacinto River, okay? So, pretty good. That's the refractometer. This technical creation right here is called the Secchi Disc. The Secchi Disc, you can see, has two separate colors. They have a black and white. This allows us to be able to test the amount of turbidity in the water, the amount of clarity in the water. We want to see how far we can see. Most of the time in Galveston, you can rarely see your feet. We have a lot of silty sediments coming in. Like Bill said, lots of uh, rivers coming in. It creates lots of sediment. And we're also on the side of the mouth of the Mississippi River that creates a lot more of this sediment coming through. So we have silty water. I like to call it delicious and nutritious. There's a lot of nutrients coming in. There's a lot of stuff. So it's not gross water. It's delicious and nutritious. So we're going to test the suckiness. Now I can kind of still see my feet. So I'm going to go a little bit farther. A lot of times we're going to do this off the boat. Now what I'm going to be looking for is a distinction between the white and the black lines. At the point where I can't find, I can't see the distinction between the white and the black lines is the point where I'm going to pull up the string and see how long it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly lower the secchi disc into the water. And I'm going to have you guys follow it with me and see how far we can release and still see the distinction between those white lines. So it's starting to get a little bit cloudy now. We're going to go a little bit farther, a little bit farther. I can still see the distinction between the white and the black. A little bit farther. I'm going to go a little deeper too. Oh, right there, right there is, I cannot see the distinction anymore. So I'm gonna pull it up a little bit so you guys can see. I'm gonna put it back down to where we can't see. Now I'm gonna grab it right at the water. This is sad, that's about a foot, but we do have a lot of delicious nutrients in this water, delicious and nutritious. If you've ever swallowed salt water in Galveston, congratulations. 
there was plankton in it. So uh, extra protein for you guys. But that is how we measure with our Secchi disc to see if there is a high level of turbidity in the water.